Hi, I'm Wilford Brimley, and I have diabetes. It hurts me to pee, and it causes me to be short with my family. I can't sleep at night. The other day, I stubbed my toe and took it out on the dog. And two weeks ago, I ran out of vanilla ice cream and struck my wife. And then I find out my wife's been dead for six years. Who the hell did I hit? This message. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in once again to another week of Diabetes Dynasties. You're going to be watching part two here tonight. And if you watch part one, we thank you for suffering with us. If you've watched part one, then you already know what's going on. But if not, essentially, here's a brief breakdown. We are taking legendary American Diabetes Association spokesman Wilford Brimley, throwing him into a video game, slapping a sweater vest, visor, and some glasses on that bad boy, and we're going to rebuild some dynasties. Step one, let's rebuild Florida State, a program that was national champions after 2013 and has fallen dramatically since then. So we're going to take a little bit of a skewed, updated roster, not quite updated to 2021, but I didn't really want to rock last year's roster because this is going to be ongoing. So we're off to an 0-3 start. We've had one ACC game, and we've had two non-conference games, and they haven't been pretty. We lost to Nebraska in the last episode, and, well, we're just trying to get some momentum going at this week, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, here's Diabetes Dynasties. All right, so starting off here, we're looking at Boston College. Now, BC is obviously a team that uh, had some success in probably the early ages of college football, most notably in the 80s with Doug Flutie. Since then, though, they've been known for prospects like Matt Ryan. We're going to tackle him this week, but first, let's get down to some recruiting. Once again, if I'm looking down, I am live commenting on the edited video that we do already have. So we're going to jump back into some recruiting. We have Ron Henderson. We have about 650 points into him. Pete Holloway, we're at 600. Joey Booker, five. And we just kind of got some points spread out. Shannon Johnson, uh, David Rogers, Patrick Smith. They're going to be a couple of recruits we're going after. Uh, we have a sizable lead with some people. There's my boy Austin Powers that's going to be on our team. So spoiler alert, we do end up recruiting him. I kind of uh, jinxed that one in the first video and let that out to you guys. But yeah, we're going to take some points from Rob Malloy because it looks like he's pretty well into Texas at this point. Our boy Kenny Porter back at it again. Uh, so this is going to be an exciting team. I know a handful of these recruits we actually did end up having on our team. So we'll kind of see where this goes. Obviously, there's a surprise on some people like Ron Henderson, Pete Holloway, Shannon Johnson. Obviously, they're at the top of the list. Chris Lynch, as you just saw. So yeah, we're just kind of dividing it up here. Uh, at this point, we do have some players with some sizable leads in recruiting. Obviously, just as a recap, we recruit with points. You're allowed so many points a week. You see the bonus right below. That's just a bonus on how well the prospect likes your school. So obviously, the more he naturally likes your school, the less hard you're probably going to have to work on recruiting and vice versa. So going 0-4 here to start the year. That's not good. Looks like Cameron Hines committed. Jonathan Bowling committed to another school. Rob Malloy, we kind of knew he was going to Texas, so he committed. Jonathan Carter, Harrison Barnett committing to USC and FIU individually. So... A couple of prospects that we had some uh, little bit of an investment in. Obviously, I think Rob Malloy was kind of the one we really determined Texas had that sizable lead. So, see what happens from here. Uh, after that loss, yeah, we're going to go into a bye week here. Just get some recruiting done. Let's juice it up on Joey Booker, Booker so we don't have to lose another guy to Texas. David Rogers is interesting because we have such a lead, but once again, you don't really want to get cocky with a player because uh, they can get a school visit, kind of feel like a little neglected, and I've seen them come back. So let's see where this goes here against Maryland. Do we get our first win this week or do we go to 0-5? Here we go. Finally. Finally. Winning the game 29-14. It looks like we lost out on Jake Mitchell uh, fullback prospect and then Morgan Cameron a left outside linebacker prospect but I don't think we were really throwing too much uh, investment into them anyway so Pete Holloway Dustin Jackson Bo Sullivan um Bo Sullivan looks like he's locked us out so we're not going to be messing with him too much uh Kenny Porter's still on the board we have my boy Austin Powers as I kind of spoiled a little bit we do end up getting him but it looks like brian carter here is going to be someone we can start throwing some points into as well um we ended up simulating past that week shannon johnson committed to our team a lot of the same a lot of the same for recruiting here i kind of fast cut through that bye week there really wasn't too much to do in recruiting there wasn't too much to do anywhere so yeah i do some really fucking fast cuts on these Ooh, this week we got clemson baby 
So got Ron Anders Henderson, uh, Pete Holloway, Joey Booker, David Rogers right at the top of the board there. Chris Lynch and David Rogers. We have a sizable lead on. Brian Mason, once again, like I said, do not take those players for granted. We're yeah, we're gonna go ahead and throw a couple extra points to him there just because. 73 overall is a little low, especially on the line, but, you know, we do obviously always need line help, line depth. You never know when you're going to lose a guard, a tackle, a couple of tackles, a couple centers. So it looks like Kevin Doyle there is a little bit better than probably once thought. 74 overall is a three-star prospect. We'll take it. We'll take it. Throw him a couple of points here. Try to uh, out juice the U. Dustin Jackson. We're getting behind on Dustin Jackson. I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, against Clemson here uh, was the number one team. Let's see how we fare. They're number six now. They did uh, lose, I believe, what was it, in week three. I think the week we ended up playing Nebraska, they ended up getting upset. So we'll see what happens here. I don't like our chances, though. And against number six, Clemson, we get shut out. Holy shit. Wow. I mean, not to say it's not expected, but that's a little bit of a dick kick. Uh, whew, all righty, then. Looks like we're in a bunch of recruiting battles with some prospects right now. Uh, shout out Celsius, beverage of the stream here of the commentary. North Carolina State, it looks like we have the edge on defense. Um, definitely not on record, definitely not in most categories. Kirk Herbstreet is officially off the FSU bandwagon at this point. Brian Carter, let's just go all in, 700 points a week. We only have a 285 bonus on there, but we do have a visit coming up before UCF. So that's important next week in week 10. So let's see how we do against NCU or North Carolina State. Well, we scored this week, so that's good. 7 to 37 is not, but hey, 1 in 6, that's um it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. At least we have one win, right? We beat Maryland. That's that's positive. That's that's good, I think. Oh god. Whew, let's hope we at least make it through the season at this point. Dear god. All right, so Herbie's going to take Miami. They're 6 and 1, 3 and 0 in the conference. A lot better than us, too. We have a lot of players coming and visiting this week, though. We have a lot of battles with Miami. Obviously, Florida State, Miami, we're going to attract a lot of the same prospects there. So I might end up jumping in and playing this game. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to jump in and play this here. Uh, Glenn Rhodes, obviously, someone we have a huge. Huge jump on um, Jordan Travis sitting down there 16th in the FBS in passing yards. Let's check some stats here. Let's see how he's actually doing because obviously he's not too bad in passing yards. Five touchdowns. Holy shit. 15 interceptions. That's a 5-15 split. That is one touchdown for every three interceptions he is throwing. He is averaging three interceptions for every one touchdown. And at this point, we're six games in. So, yeah, that's almost... Almost three picks a game. What was I thinking running a pass-based offense with such a low overall quarterback? Especially a guy who's shown ability as a runner, especially in the first game we played with Nebraska. So let's go ahead and switch that up here a little bit. Uh, one tip in dy dynasty mode here, and I kind of waited a little bit because I knew right off the bat in this roster, this might not be good. But I figured, hey, maybe he'll surprise me, but he didn't. So I'm going to switch it back to a 50-50 split there, go with Oregon's playbook. God, we should let's play this game against Miami. Uh, they are better than us on offense overall, but we do have an even edge on defense. Our defense for Florida State is probably our staple right now. So let's see where we go from here. Let's see what kind of uniforms. I say let's see, like I don't already know. We're gonna pick the black unis here. Obviously, you see the different alternates. We have the red, we have the white with the red. Uh, but obviously, those Florida State black alternates. Uh, we rocked kind of like the darker red, all reds, the 2009 Nike Pro Combat ones for the Nebraska game. We're just gonna go with the all blacks here. Let's see how that treats us. But yeah, 14.3 points per game, which is 122nd in the nation, and I'm pretty sure that's last. So. Yeah, but we're 11th in yards, which is really confusing. 15th in passing yards and 126th in rushing. So good news is there's not just 122 teams. Whew. Jalen Phillips is someone they did not take out of this game. That is not going to bode well. That is not going to bode well for us. I think he's going to wreak havoc in the backfield. Yeah, because Jalen Phillips is someone, I believe he was taken by the Titans, if I remember right. But yeah, he's someone who was a hell of a, hell of a pass rusher. Had concussion issues at USC and then ended up uh, retiring from football for a year, came back, transferred to the University of Miami and actually had a hell of a year this year with Gregory Rousseau uh, sitting out. So 
Miami had two star pass rushers in the draft. Obviously, they keep one in school here. So they're going to win the toss. Give us the ball to start. Let's go. Once again, I always return every kick. So Jay, nine yards deep in the end zone. Let's get it, buddy. All right, so going to the 20 there. Let's see how we start off. It looks like we are at the 20-yard line driving down the field. I sim through a lot of the gameplay here just because I'm very West Coast. It takes me, well, a while, as you see, over two minutes to get down the field here. Oh, heck of a pickup block there. And bam, LaDamian Webb with the tutty from 20 yards out. He's going to go ahead and give us the lead early against Miami here. And I'm going to be playing this whole game myself. I did get a little bit juiced up on the controls last time, a little caught up. So we'll see what happens here. On defense here, third and 13. Hopefully we can get a stop. And De'Ara King with, uh, I'm going to guess he probably ran into a lineman or something there and ended up affecting his throwing motion. So we're going to get the ball back here. Jordan Travis off to a solid start so far. Let's do a little read option. Let's see what happens here. Oh, man, I almost ran into that guy there, but we're going to take it in for the tutty there. 14-0. Uh, we're already over 100 yards in the game. Jordan Travis, obviously, our dual threat quarterback. Hell of a guy. Uh, so we're going to see a studio update. Ooh, it looks like Clemson, two weeks after shouting us out, is having a little bit of a contest against Virginia. So we'll keep eyes on that as we go through here. Another read option here. Travis up the middle to the five-yard line for a first down. This is something that I'm going to exploit. with switching to Oregon's playbook. They're huge on the read option, and obviously at this time, the motion-based, the read option that was uh, going wild in college football, specifically a feature in this game was the improved read option mechanics. Oh, there we go. Break off your route for the touchdown. Jordan Young, about five yards out there. And Jordan Travis is going to be throwing it to him. 112 yards with one touchdown to start. Let's get back on defense here. 27 seconds left in the second quarter. See what happens, Samuel Jr., and I should have taken the other cornerback because even in cover four, my defense is still shit. Should have went cover six, probably should have went with a prevent defense there. But, yeah, let's go ahead and just allow a touchdown there at the end of the half. 21-7 going in a half, so obviously we got a 14-point lead. Miami's going to start with the ball back here in the second half. We're going to kick it off to them. Let's try a squib here. Fuck it. Why not? You know, because we can't already shoot ourselves enough in the foot. And, you know, maybe the squib will go all the way down. Figure out how to kick this one here. And right to the tight end. Just a reminder, I cannot break tackles, but the CPU can. So, uh, yeah, it's a fun fact. Fun fact of life there. So, yeah, first and 10. They're inside the red zone here. Looks like about the 14, 13-yard line. See what happens. We're in a cover three zone here. De'Eric King's going to take it for the scramble. And it oh, looks like computer animation's really kind of funny on this one. Like like I've mentioned before, new engine for the 14 game. Uh, so a couple of kinks that they never ended up working out, but still a big fan of it playing overall. A little bit of a veer option there to the outside. Cameron Harris is going to go in for the touchdown because our guys cannot stop a running back. Just a heads up, they can. Defensive end. 50 pounds bigger, doesn't matter. So I shouldn't really bitch too much. We're up by seven here. Oh, there we go, Travis. Get it up the middle. Get it, get it. Oh, whoo. Jay Sean Corbin picking up the slack. There's Jordan Travis fumbles it on the one yard line. We're going to give it back to Corbin here on second down. Run it in for the tutty. 14 to 28. Little ACC logo there. Shout out to the league. Shout out to the conference. Some Florida State fan footage. Let's check another update here. All right, Clemson, Virginia. It looks like that game's pretty well put away at a uh, minute 36 left, but we'll see what happens. Miami with their 99 overall kicker. I wondered at first why they were trying it from this far out, and then after he makes the kick here, I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's right. He's a 99 overall. We saw that at the beginning of the game. All right, little, little fake screen wheel route here. Playing off in cover three, and oh, That is not good. That is not good. Shout out. I'm actually wearing Miami on my hat here, so probably shouldn't have jinxed myself by commenting on this game while playing Miami, but hey, fuck it. They're going to go for two. Thank God to the running back, cutting off the Eric King's throwing motion there. A studio update. Yep, Clemson holds on 38-28. No surprise there, but it would have kind of been cool to see Clemson go down again, but I guess you really don't get the kind of luck of the two games we play a year, Clemson losing each week, so. Going forward here, fourth and one, minute 31 left. 
Ice the game, baby. Ice it down. Now, the question is, is do I get cocky and keep going, or do I just take a couple of knees, run out the clock? We keep going. You know, losers around here, we run up the score, boy. All right. A little read option action here. Let's see what happens. Watching that defensive end where the R is, kind of running down the clock here a little bit. I see the concept on the read option. Defense crashes. You go ahead and keep it as the quarterback, vice versa. So we're going to keep it with Travis and stumble into the end zone for another little padding score there. Drop it down to 35 to 23. And assumed last play of the game here. Let's go ahead and see what Miami does. But with 11 seconds, I don't think they're going to come back uh, 12 points. So, yeah, nice little short pass there. Tick, 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 and boom. In a week where we have a bajillion recruits visiting. In a week where we literally had like the opposite record as the other team. They were six and one, we were one and six. But hey, any given Saturday, I can take control of a team on varsity difficulty and lead them to a dub. And boy, did they need it. But yeah, shout out Jordan Travis here. Over almost 150 yards rushing. Buck 79 throw in there. So obviously our young quarterback, you know, hopefully gaining some experience there, you know, against a tough, gritty Miami team. And look at that. Dividends are paid. Pete Holloway, Ron Henderson, David Rogers, Joey Booker, Chris Lynch, guys that we were top 10 on the recruiting board there. My boy, Kenny Porter, Glenn Rhodes, Austin Powers, Brian Mason. Shoot, even Matt Lewis and Patrick Smith. Let's go ahead and throw them in there. We get a bunch of recruits here going to Florida State this week, baby. So that was God, that was almost all the points I invested. I want to see how many points I actually have left after this week because, well, like I said, yeah, that's that's all the points. As you see, we signed eight four-star prospects this week. Obviously, guys like Kenny Porter were fantastic gets for us. Uh, Pete Holloway, I think, is going to be a staple on this team going forward. Austin Powers, hey, you got to love the name. Be it strong safety. You know, get a little bit of versatility there in the background. But, man, from 6,500 points to 850, we, yeah. Dustin Jackson's unlocked us after his visit. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to stay for too long, but we are going to go ahead and add Locksmith uh, to Coach Willie Dubs here, Mr. Wilford Brimley. As far as Locksmith, essentially what it is is you can unlock a player who has locked you out if you are within 2,000 points of the next school on that list. So we'll kind of jump back in here, see if maybe we can get a prospect unlocked. I, I should have checked beforehand when I was playing this to see if we could. Because I know Dustin Jackson was my first thought as far as, like, who can we unlock? Because we just got that boost. We just jumped back in. But Bo Sullivan, we're too far gone on. JT Allen, we are just too far gone on. You thought maybe beating the U, we'd probably get a little buffer for that. But no. So, yeah, kind of a rough one here. Um, when you do go to unlock a player, I think I'll eventually get to it here. But, yeah, you're going to go to top schools. And at the bottom there, it will say you know, hey, press X to unlock, you know, get back in this player's, you know, kind of good graces. And then it gives you an absolutely massive jump. We'll be featuring that later on in the series, more like next year, probably when we're uh, recruiting. But this year, it seems like a lot of the prospects are just a little too far gone. So. And the good luck does not last as we lose to Wake Forest, 15 to 31, dropping our record to two and two and seven now. I believe we're two and seven. Yes. So setting up the matchup with two and seven Syracuse here. Uh, next episode of Diabetes Dynasties, we're going to be playing Syracuse. But first, let's get some recruiting in. Why not? Giggle and shit with some shits and giggles. And as I just messed that line up horribly, but at this point, we're investing into players. I might end up just cutting next year. Willie McNair, shout out to uh, the late great Steve McNair. I'm sure this isn't a kid because it's well, he's computer generated, but. So yeah, we have TJ Williams there, who we have a bit of a lead on. Probably hopefully go back and add some points to him. But as you see, just a caveat of recruits that we actually locked down. We can kind of start focusing our points elsewhere. I don't know how much that's going to actually help us. Uh, obviously, you know, with some of the prospects we have a lead on still, without investing into them, are going to be kind of lower tiered guys. And then outside of that, anybody like Dustin Jackson, it's going to be a long shot. But we're going to go ahead and pick up the win against Syracuse here, 27-6. to six. Kevin Doyle's going to um, commit to our school, so that's awesome. We got another free safety in there. I you know Pete Holloway is very versatile. I can't remember where we end up putting him going into year two, but he's extremely versatile as far as where he can play. He can play running back, receiver, any of the secondary positions. So, yeah, three and seven going against FAU. And I think this is where we cut it off, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's where we end up cutting it off, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on Rushmore Sports Addicts here. Three and seven. We got a little bit of the season kind of to go, but at this point we are not eligible for a bowl. So we'll probably just end up finishing up our remaining schedule. And next week our, on the next episode, whenever we drop it, which is most likely just going to be in a couple of days after you're watching this one, we're going to go through the rest of the season, kind of just jump right into the coaching changes, see who's leaving, see who we get drafted, off-season recruiting, and then we're going to get to the fun stuff, such as position changes and putting the players through training and seeing how much they jump up, you know, in their overall attributes. I want to see guys like Jordan Travis kind of jump up. Obviously, my quarterback, I'd like to see a nice boost out of him. Uh, Jay Sean Corbin is another guy, obviously, already really good as a running back, as an 86 overall. So being I don't think he'd go pro after this year, I think we'll get him for one more season. So I'm really excited to see where this team goes. Uh, year two is going to be absolutely fun. Fantastic. It's going to throw us some twists and turns. But yeah, obviously, I know this sitting behind the camera, but you don't. Where are we at? Are we 8-0? Are we 10-0? Are we 3-7? and seven And I'm just hyping this up for no fucking reason. And in year two, we suck again. Who knows? But for Rushmore Sports Addicts and Fishing Elephant Media, my name is Cole Blenner. Shout out to the U, shout out to the Miami Heat, even though this is not a football or basketball video, whatever I'm just saying words, we're out.